Hello to all my young friends. <clears throat> my name is Joe Sherman, and I work at the First United Methodist Church in Whitewater. Now, I know many of you young, my young friends uh, know me from when you come to church and you see me around, and we're working together in Promise Point and middle school and prime time. And uh, today, Miss Beth asked me if I would read you all a story. And I picked one of my favorite stories that I have read here at the church in the past. And uh, it's a book uh, called The Last Straw. And it's written by Frederick Thury and published by Tailwinds Books. And it's, it's about a camel <clears throat> that had a uh, very, very hard job that he was asked to do and uh, you will see why when we get uh, reading it. So anyway, the camel's name was Hashmakaka. Now that's a hard name to say and uh, you try and say that over and over, Hashmakaka. So here's the story. Hashmakaka, the old camel, was asleep in the desert night. He dreamed of all the water in the world and a hump that would hold an entire sea. Hearing voices, Hashmakaka opened one eye. He heard Hashmakaka, Hashmakaka. Reluctantly, Hashmakaka opened the other eye. Why should I wake up? He grumbled. The sand whirled up into the moonlight sky. You have been chosen, the voices whispered. The sand seemed to shift again. You will carry gifts to the new baby king. Who are you? Hashmakaka wanted to know, for he was an old camel and felt he had earned his sleep. You will carry frankincense, mirth, and gold. The wise man has chosen you to do this job. Hashmakaka got up very slowly. Why me, he said. If these men are so wise, don't they know about my joints and my gout, my sciatica, all my joints that hurt and all the pain I'm going through? Why did you say I am to carry and how much will it weigh? Besides, I have other commitments. There is a water drinking competition in Rangal. Then I really must go to the cud chewing convention in Beamish. The sand blew furiously, cutting into the black night. Hashmakaka was startled and decided he had better do as the voices said. Who knew what made the sand move like creatures with great wings? When do I start, he asked carefully. The voice said, today. With that, the sand voices disappeared, and it was morning. It was still early as the servants of the wise men placed the precious gifts onto Hashmakaka's back. The young camels ran to their good friend. They all looked up to him because he was old, and they thought him wise. You must be a very special camel, they sighed. I am very special. Hashmakaka puffed out his chest in pride and then said something a little foolish. I'm not so old. I'm still as strong as ten horses, and I have been chosen to carry rich gifts to the new baby king. Can we come too? asked the youngest camel, who never wanted to be left behind. Aren't we your friends? shouted another. You can walk beside me, Hashmakaka replied in his most regal voice, and the long journey began. At noon, a herd of Mountain goats came into view. Hashmakaka thought that they had come a long way from the mountain home in the north. What is it you want? Hashmakaka called out. 
We have heard tell of the new king who is to be born. Please take our humble gift with you. It's milk for the king. You want me to carry milk? Hashmakaka spurted in shock. I am not a milk-bearing camel. I am not ordinary like you. The young camels chorused. No, he is not ordinary. They looked up to him with their big brown eyes. He's strong. Why, he's as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka muttered to himself, Oh, my joints, my gout, my sciatica. Aloud, he said grandly, Give me your gifts. At one o'clock, he was stopped by a family of millers. Look, said the youngest camel. They're carrying bags of ground corn. Do you suppose they're for the new king? They will have to carry it themselves, Hashmakaka said. They can follow that star like the rest of us. The young camels crowded around Hashmakaka eagerly. But you're so strong. You're as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka felt weary just looking at the bags. But he said to the millers, Give me your heavy bags and I'll carry them. At two o'clock the next day, Young ladies gave Hashmakaka their fine silks. At least a cloth doesn't weigh anything, he thought. And then at three o'clock, an old man in fine clothes gave him two rare birds in silver cages. At four o'clock, some merchants gave him pillars of oak that came all the way from Lebanon. At five o'clock, a group of bakers gave him their finest sweet meats and pastries, and they loaded all of this on Hashmakaka's back. At six o'clock, the sun finally went down, and the crowds melted into the coming night. Hashmakaka gradually sank into the sand in the kind darkness he didn't have to pretend he was as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka became aware that it didn't seem as dark as usual. He looked up and saw the splendor of the skies with a special brightness of the star he had been following. He fell asleep, wondering about the sand voices and the wings he had thought he could almost see. But as the sun rose over the desert hills, it was hard to remember the wonder of that star. For a new day brought new pains and new burdens for Hashmakaka. I don't think I will make it. I can't carry anymore. My legs are getting weaker. Oh, my gout, my sciatica, and all my joints are hurting so bad. I'm too loaded down, too heavy. Word of the caravan had spread like sand before the desert wind. People lined the route holding up their gifts for Hashmakaka to take to the baby king. There were jars full of honey and baskets of money. There were jewels and beads and large rolls of leather. And last but not least, there were 20 gallons of wine. Hashmakaka moaned to himself, this will bring me ruin, this fruit of the vine. But then the youngest camel cried out, Look there, it's Bethlehem. You've made it, Hashmakaka. You are as strong as ten horses. Hashmakaka knew he could just do it if he did not stop until he arrived at the spot beneath the star. He could. He knew he could. Just then, out of the growing darkness, a small voice said, I have a gift for the baby. Hashmakaka looked down at a tiny child. Please, child, no more gifts. It has no weight. It's long and light. It's for the king who was born this night. It's little, the child added. Too little is too much, Hashmakaka whispered. 
Didn't I hear them say that you were strong as ten horses? Asked the child. Well, yes, I am, sort of, but my joints, my gout, all my knees and the pain. Hashmakaka looked into the child's eyes and in his heart melted. Yes, child, give it to me. This smaller than small gift, what harm can it do? It's for his bed. It's all I have. No problem at all, said Hashmakaka bravely if foolishly. All this time Hashmakaka had kept walking because he knew if he stopped he could not start again because of the heavy load it was getting heavier all the time. Now he could see that the star shone down upon a lowly stable. Child, do it now. Place your straw upon my back as I approach the new king. Hashmakaka entered the stable. My knees are loosening, my legs, they wobble, my back is breaking. Will this last straw cause me to fall? And for that, with that, Hashmakaka fell to his knees. Oh my, he thought, this is no way for a camel to behave. This will say that Hashmakaka, the weak camel, Hashmakaka, the proud camel, should not have traveled this far. But the wise men noticed Hashmakaka. Quickly, they too knelt. They're mocking me now, falling on their knees, heads bent over like gnarled old trees. Then from the hum humble manger, a tiny hand reached out and touched Hashmakaka. His pain seemed to disappear. All his problems went away. He could no longer feel the weight of his load. Hashmakaka whispered to the baby, Hosanna from, from Hashmakaka, accept these gifts kindly. They come from far and wide, brought by a beast who once acted blindly. For that time there was no burden, great or small, that Hashmakaka could not gladly carry. I found that reading this story, it showed me that if you put your mind to anything that you're doing, no job, no burden is too hard to carry if you just put everything you have into it. Like my friend here, Hashmakaka. Thank you very much for letting me read you this story. And I know that this year, Christmas may be a little different for all of us, but I hope you have the best Christmas that it can be.